It's magic And I won't sing it DMCA style Like I was right before making this video What's up sons, it's Blind Rod with Sovet Tech once again And today I have yet another how to video for anybody that owns this graphics card and wants to know how to replace the thermal pads and the thermal paste i got your back but before that make sure you check out my affiliate links for yubikeys down in the description below has your steam account ever been hacked mine has protect it with a yubikey well no you can't really ubisoft accounts you can though also steam you need to get on that that's super frustrating i want to be able to use my yubikey and you want me to use your Steam Authenticator thingy on my phone. And I don't like that. All right, there we go. All right, stepping off the soapbox there. Let's talk about replacing thermal pads on the EVGA RTX 3070 Black Edition. So this particular model doesn't have a backplate, which should make this a little bit easier. And it does seem to uh, need to have this done about every three months if you're mining and probably every year or so. Obviously, depending on warranty, it's really up to you on the gaming side of things. On my specific setup, we mine with them. And after three months, the thermal pads began to break down. We didn't have any thermal throttling yet, but when we took the card apart, as you'll see, or as you can see here, you can see that the thermal pads were coming off onto the v VRMs and, and memory modules, and, and the, the thermal paste was really, really hard. It was, uh, had to get it off. It was pretty hard to clean off, so it, it hardened really, really good. I think if you're mining on these cards, Pretty much any of the EVGAs, probably every three to six months, you know, you should go ahead and think about replacing the thermal pads just to keep it functioning in tip top shape. Another note about that is that it is still a lot better when breaking down than the Gigabyte models. So the Gigabyte models for the 3000 series, when they break down, they leak oil everywhere. Those pads are terrible. Really honestly, with the Gigabyte models, you need to replace the thermal pads stat immediately evga probably not it when it breaks down you know it just hardens and the it kind of falls apart a little bit but it doesn't leak oil all over your motherboard so there you go all right so let's get into the nitty gritty the first thing you're going to do is flip the gpu over and on the back you will have basically 10 screws you're going to remove the first six screws that are near the back side of the card with of course the tamper proof sticker over one of them and they are a smaller bit than the number one bits on the gpu core itself and once you have those seven removed it'll be ready to pull off there and then you want to get to breaking loose the screws that hold the core onto of course the heatsink for this i always recommend breaking loose each screw first and then loosening them in a star pattern to keep even pressure on the core just to ensure that you aren't going to cause any damage once again i uh, do this all at your own risk of course so once you've got those four off and then the you are ready to flip the card over and take the cooler off there are going to be four connections one of course for lights a couple for lights and then three for the fans so on so to get rid of those you're just these are these clips are fantastic actually my favorite clips on a gpu cooler that i've dealt with for the 3000 series and the new radeon series they you push them back and pull them up and they clip out super easy so do the first three that connect the fans and they're color coded awesome dude evga Good job, that's amazing. You don't even need a tamper-proof sticker. You guys made this easy as heck, I love it. So then you can, once you get those off, you can flip the GPU cooler off of the, the board, off of the PCB and lay it flat next to it and then pull the black uh, connector for the RGB LEDs off. And but um, you are ready to rock and roll with replacing the pads. So the pad layout on this particular GPU is going to be pretty simple. 
So they are all two millimeter pads. We measured them, of course, with the calipers just to verify. All of them are two millimeter. You have basically pads covering the video memory modules and you just cut those to size, lay them over there. Then on the VRMs near the front of the board towards the IO connectors or IO, you have another thin two millimeter pad that you need to cut there and place there. And then on the towards the back of the board before it starts cutting out because of the new design for the reference boards, you have the uh, just a couple more there, another two millimeter pad. Follow the picture, place the pads down, clean the core off, and reapply thermal paste. Once again, I prefer spreading the paste when dealing with GPU cores to ensure even spread. Also, they're just more sensitive. One of the great things about this GPU in particular is it is an all copper heat sink, which is awesome. It does seem to run really, really cool. It's probably one of the better 3000 series cards out right now as far as construction goes. You don't have any of those weird like, oh, we just slapped on a cooler from, I don't know, a 2000 series and the pads don't all line up. No, it is very specific to this board. It all lines up. Awesome job as far as cooler design on these cards. It is disappointing it doesn't have a back plate, but not that disappointing. You can bump up a model to the to the Ultra Gaming or the For the Win editions, and they have back plates, but I'm pretty sure you can see they use the same PCB for the most part. I'm sure the cores bend. So you know, it's going to be a similar process for those aside from like the back plate. And if you are dealing with the back plate, you may want to think about measuring out. I'm pr pretty certain they're probably going to be three millimeter. We'll confirm because we're going to break down a 3060 Ti here for you guys. That is the Further Wind 3 Ultra Edition. Once we break that down, I'll be able to give you a better idea on probably all of the Further Wind 3 Ultra Editions because they use the similar cooler setup, similar backplate setup, so on and so forth. You're just cut down on modules and so on. So once you get that done, all you're gonna do is place the cooler back, well, place the cooler side by side at the top, plug in the LED header, and then flip the card on, trying to make sure you line it up. It can be a little tricky, just be patient. Don't slam it down onto there. And then plug in the three fan headers which that can be a little tricky. The blue one is the one that got me. It took me a little bit to get the blue one plugged back in. And then at that point, you are going to flip the GPU back over and you will have four screws to, obviously the larger screws to put the GPU or the cooler back to the GPU core. For that one, like I always say, make sure that you start all the screws first and then tighten up in a star pattern evenly to apply even pressure to the GPU core. That is important. Once you have those four in place, you can then proceed to screw back in the six additional screws holding the back of the PCB to the cooler and you are good to go. So hope the video was helpful. I found this one to be super simple to replace. Like I said, I'm a little disappointed with the, the breakdown on the thermal pads. It seemed to occur a little bit faster than I was expecting. Um, we didn't have any thermal throttling going on to be clear. I just wanted to do the video to basically preemptively have it ready for you guys to check because I know that these cards are coming in and some of them need to be replaced faster than others. I'll try to get that information for you guys. But for mining, it's looking three to six months on the 3070. You should be prepared to replace the pads. Links in the description for the pads, two millimeter, you can just order like a 100 by 100 sheet should cover everything you need to do. And then of course you have all the tools that we've talked about in previous videos. Check out the iFixit toolkit. It'll be down there. Check out the scissors. They'll be down there. <laughs> and I'll see you next Tuesday.